Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In the last video on machine learning, I went through the basics of how to set up your environment, get Python installed, get TensorFlow all set up, and get past a couple of the issues that I ran into. If you haven't already done that and you're not sure how to do that, just go back to that last video, check it out, it'll take you through everything that you need. Or there's also a full text blog post, I'll link that below, where you can go step by step just follow the steps. It takes 20-30 minutes to get all set up just from the installers. In this one I'm going to show you the the next part which is going through and setting up the rollerball sample. So there's a nice uh, walkthrough on the Unity GitHub page and I'm essentially going to go through a lot of the steps in there and just uh, show it visually, show um, at least one of the issues where I ran into a, a problem that I just wasn't sure what I was doing and did stuff a little bit wrong. So to get started, I'm just going to open up the project. So I just go to File, Open Project, and we need to, here, I'm going to browse to it. So I have it in here. It's in git slash ml agents, and then uh, there's a Unity environment subfolder. So you just want to open that folder up in Unity. And it shouldn't take too long. It's going to update again. I think you need 2017 Point one at the bare minimum for this to work. So make sure that you're opening it in 2017.1 or higher. 2017.2 is also available now, so that I assume would work fine. I haven't tried it in there, but no reason to think it wouldn't work there. Probably even better. Okay, so once it opens, the first thing that we do is just double check um, a couple of settings. So you wanna go into here. First, actually, let's open up the scene. So we'll go to ML Agents, Examples, 3D Ball, and open up the scene right here. And you can see the scene is just some balls and some platforms. And the point of this is just going to be to make the balls balance on the platforms using some machine learning. So the machine learning will control those platforms to keep the ball from falling off. Now the first thing we want to do is go to Edit, Project Settings, and Player. And you're just want double checking in here that... Um, run in the background is on and um, the dialogue is not showing so that's in right let's see right here resolution and presentation so run in background it should be checked these things should already be set right you're just double checking that they're that they are and then the display resolution dialogue should be set to disabled that's just because when we do the machine learning we don't want it to pop up a dialogue that requires user interaction and we also have to have it be able to run in the background so that we're not sitting there focused on the window while it's doing the training. Um, the next thing that we want to do is expand out this 3D Ball Academy and select the 3D Brain. Now on the brain there's a brain type and when we're training we want it set to external. So you just need to switch that over to external and make sure that you save the scene. Once you've done that, you just need to go to your build settings. So just go file, build settings. Uh, your 3D ball scene should already be selected as the only one there. They recommend you check the development build checkbox and then build it out. So hit build and when you build it though, you don't want to build to this folder. You want to go up a folder and then into the Python subfolder and then give it a name uh, for your application. I named mine ball and just give it a name that you're going to be able to remember because you do have to enter this name later. So there we go, we just build that out as ball.exe. Shouldn't take very long, it's a pretty small project. Almost done, and then once we're done, we're gonna open up our Anaconda prompt again. So let's see, any second now. Okay, there we go. So it's done, we have ball.exe right here. Now I'm gonna open up an Anaconda prompt, and I wanna change directory into this Python folder. So I'm going to do cd slash ml agents slash Python. And then in here, I just want to type Jupyter, J U P Y T E R, space notebook. And this is going to launch uh, Jupyter, which allows us to run these Python or these machine learning scripts right here. So this is launched, and I need to open up a web browser now. As soon as it finishes actually it just auto open for me that's perfect so now I've got a web browser that looks like this um, I think you can kind of see it. it should fit on the screen and I want to open up the ppo.ipynb file so just click right on it and again if you don't start Jupyter in this folder you're not going to see those so make sure that you change directory there first that was one of the issues that I came across 
Now, environment name is what you need to set. So remember I said you need to remember what you name your executable. We just need to make that match here. And we don't put .exe, we just put the name without the file extension. Now that I've got that done, I want to select this first one and just hit run. So just hit run like that. It should go, no issues, no errors. Hit it again, hit it again, keep going. And I shouldn't get any errors. And I want to go all the way up to train agents. Once I've gotten onto train agents, I want to stop. Now it's actually running in the background doing the training. And you may even see a, um, a dialog pop up or a little window pop up. You should see that in just a moment. We'll get a little Unity window pop up of our 3D ball. Oh, there we go. Now it's just asking for access and it looks like it's kicked off. It's actually running right now. So now it's doing the training. Now while it's doing the training, it's kind of boring. There's not a lot that you can see. I mean, you can kind of watch it in there, but that's not very helpful at all. Um, there is a tool that will allow you to monitor the training. I have no idea how to use it, but I will show you how to pull it up so that you can actually see it in action. So the tool that you want to use is TensorBoard. So we're going to open another Anaconda prompt. Remember that one's still running the, uh, the training right here in Jupyter. And we're going to browse back to that folder. So I'll go back to ML agent slash Python. And in here, I want to do um, TensorBoard dash dash log dir equals summaries. And this should launch another web app that'll give us a nice little UI into what's going on. Again, I still don't quite understand what the data is that it's showing there. I'm still trying to figure out the machine learning stuff myself. But it looks like uh, once I get that, it'll be somewhat useful. Let's see, I don't think it opened up the page automatically. So I just browsed to it. It's just localhost colon 6006. And just bring that right over here. And you can see it's running. Um, some bars are going up, some lines are going down. Still, again, don't know what all of these are for yet, but I can see that there's at least some progress going on. Now, to finish this, um, you can stop early just by uh, going down to this last step and hitting run. But what I did was just wait for it to totally complete. I think it took about 10 minutes and it went through a bunch of training and then came up with bots that worked pretty well. And you can see right here where it says, uh, let's scroll down. Oh, no, nope. let's just make this window smaller. So you can see it down here. There's a point where it says saved model. And, and once it's saved at least once, like I said, you can stop and then uh, pull your model in and start using it. But like I said, I went with letting it run until it was complete just to see know I guess uh, how good it could get I don't know if it actually got better but what I'm gonna do is wait for this to save one more time and then just continue on so that we're not sitting here waiting too long all right there we go it looks like it's saved one more so now I'm just gonna select the last step and run it and then we'll run one more time and it should just finish up give it just a moment Oh, I think I need to stop this step first. So stop that and then go on to the next step and try running it. There we go, that worked. So once you're done with that, you'll see that if you go to the Python slash models slash PPO folder, there'll be a new file, a dot bytes folder. So I've got ball dot bytes just based off of the name of the um, the executable that I had. Now we need to copy this file into our Unity path so that Unity can actually use it. So I'm just going to copy this by dragging it in. I'm just pull this over to the side real quick and I'm going to drag it into my Unity project. If I can pop that back up. There we go. So just go into TF models and here's a 3D ball. This is the one that already exists and came with it. I'm just going to drag ball.bytes right alongside it. Okay, now with that in place, we're almost ready. One thing that we do need to do though is grab the TensorFlow Sharp plugin, which is just an asset pack. Um, it's linked 
on the site and I'll link it in the description below so you can grab it directly from there as well. But you just grab this asset pack, it's a tfsharp.unity package and pull that right in. It's relatively big, about 200 megs, but it's pretty quick download for me at least. So pull this in and then we're going to need to go into player settings and uh, check a couple more things. There we go, we've got it, pulling it in. And then again, we're going to go into the player settings. We just have to double check that we're set to .NET 4.6, which we should already be, but it's just worth uh, double checking. And then uh, we need to add a script to define. So let's go edit, project settings, player, and I believe it's under other settings. And there we go, we're on experimental .NET 4.6. Like I said, this is in the project already, so it should just be set unless something uh, messed it up. And then we need to add the scripting to find enable TensorFlow. And this is all, all uppercase, so make sure that you match. And then save the project. So go file, save project. Now I need to restart Unity for this to work. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but that's what it recommends. So that's what I did. So just close Unity and restart it to re and reload that project. So here we go, let's reload this up. Go to Unity environment. We're just about done here. So now I want to go, well the first thing I want to do is just double check. Uh, go to edit, project settings, player, and check that my script define is still there. Okay, it is. Uh, the last time I did this, that disappeared, and I wanted to make sure that it was still here this time and it hadn't just magically disappeared again. It's probably just a failure to save on my part or something, but I wanted to double check it anyway. So now I need to go back into the 3D ball brain, and I want to change the brain type. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. I want to change the brain type right here. And it should be set to internal. Again, if you don't see internal, it's probably that missing script defined. So just go back, put the script defined in, hit play, and then stop and it'll show back up. So if you look here, once we switch to internal, there's a graph model field that says missing the text asset. Now I'm just gonna take my ball, drop that in there, and we should be good to go. Now on the site, they recommend that you make sure that there's an epsilon here with I believe it said values of zero and zero, and the, yeah, this graph placeholder size was one for this, but it looks like that's already there, so we don't, shouldn't have to do anything with it. And I'm just gonna save one more time and press play, and if everything goes right, these little platforms should balance the balls. Yep, looks like it's working. So that's really all we need to do to get this basic training system set up. Uh, the harder part, again, was installing uh, TensorFlow, for me at least, and then, um, I think going from here, I'm gonna start experimenting and see what other kind of AI I can build. Try out some of the other examples that I think there are four in this project. Yeah, there's a basic, a grid world, and a tennis. So I wanna go through and try training all of these and then digging into how they work and then eventually start building up some AI for some crazy bots and a couple game ideas that I have and just see how it works. I have a feeling it's gonna be really cool Maybe it won't be, I'm not really sure. Like I said, still kind of new to this machine learning stuff, but I'm excited about it. So if you like this video and you wanna see more, uh, don't forget to like and hit subscribe. If you wanna do the installation, you're not quite up to this point, just make sure that you go back to that previous video or check out the blog post where I go through all of the steps that you need. And um, yeah, just don't forget to like and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.